it's just so sad that he's trying so hard and he can't seem to get a job. That's all they see is the disease, not the person behind the diagnosis. Well, like any other parent, you're hoping that your child will go into university and hopefully land herself a job. So, you know, that was my hope. I didn't see that that was going to happen. I guess it took us a while to realize that he really didn't have specific uh, skills for full-time employment. They are trained for nothing and so nothing is what they get to do. All right. Um, <laughs> okay. All right, let's okay. put those in the fridge to cool out. Not mine. And then shortly. Mary, I'm saying, not mine. Right. My friend. You know, you know what you're doing? Oh, yeah. yeah, he's going to fry mine. Yeah, okay. let right. him go. And I remember when it was just a regular occurrence of the ambulances being called to our house. Jim really struggled with delusions and, and a reality that's not everybody else's reality and you don't understand it and everybody else doesn't understand why you're acting the way you are. You know, so those were definite issues that just just couldn't get out of the way. I, I've always hated silence. I don't know why, I just... If he stuck me in a country road somewhere, I'd be like... Uh, I don't know. Jim was diagnosed with schizophrenia in his teenage years. Mental health awareness in the early 1980s wasn't what it is today. This is part of the reason why he had to move schools a lot of different times. Sometimes he'd just get kicked out for really erratic behavior. And he, he wouldn't be in a position to really explain himself because he was in the midst of a delusion. I always knew my mom had an illness. Um, in fact, I may have inherited it from her. I mean, for quite a while there, it was pretty crazy. And I think a lot of the kids were seeing her as an element of the community that should go away. Um, there was fights all the time with neighbors and stuff. And I th I'm sure now that was a big impact on how I did as a kid. The weirdest thing though I find is, is having schizophrenia is that um, um, all my friends have sort of gone away. Even I'm trying to accept it still. <laughs> we have the onion, right? Mm -hmm. We know about the onion. Oh, we sure do. We want to keep that core in place. And then we're going to go once across, right? And then turn through. My name is Mavis Ricketts, I'm Dory's mother. I went and had her assessed when she was eight years old. Then I learned that um, she has developmental cognitive delay and hyperactivity disorder. She, she started high school in, in Jamaica. 
it was a huge challenge. She stayed in high school for just one year because she just wasn't fitting in. The teachers couldn't understand her. I don't know if she understood them. If she's to sit an exam, it would be under the same circumstances like the normal kids. She couldn't go at that pace. Students will tease her. One evening she came home and etched the word loser in the dining table. So when I questioned her, she said she didn't get the question right and they called her a loser. Like any other parent, you're hoping that your child will go on to the university and hopefully land herself a job. So, you know, that was my hope. I didn't see that that was going to happen. You have to wash your board because you're eating raw meat. And it's for, it's for food, it's for food cross contamination. You don't want to use. You'll get really, really sick. Try again, do you want to try it? No? Wait. Okay, ready for both of you together. One, two, three. I'm Bruce Stratton, I'm Maddie's dad and uh, co-chef from time to time. I'm Valerie McDonald, I'm her mom. I do the dishes after they cook. <laughs> well, you can go wake her up pretty soon. I'll put the kettle on for coffee. <laughs> You can run upstairs and say, Auntie Barb. She was never really clearly diagnosed the way some kids are, so we knew from the time she was about two that she had issues. Speech and language was what we noticed first. When we got her assessed, we found there were issues with fine and gross motor and all kinds of things. The other complication was she developed cancer when she was six. I have two sisters, but what, I have one sister who is not with us. She's in heaven. The other wrinkle we had in our family was our middle daughter had leukemia and she died when she was nine. There was a lot of going back and forth to sick kids. A lot of times when we couldn't really always give Madeline the support that she really needed. I have a, it's mild intellectual delay, so I, I'm just like, literally, it's, I'm, I take lots of time, I have to take lots of time to do stuff. If I start doing this, I need more time. She doesn't always present as um, capable as she really is. It takes a while for people to begin to really appreciate the skills and the interests that she does bring. Certainly it's a challenge for uh, most uh, young adults who are in Madeline's position. Um, I guess the hardest part is... Jim, hmm. what is the hardest part? Speed. speed. It's the speed. <laughs> Scott's been always very confident. He has this innate sense. When we see him out on his own, it's because he has that confidence and he's, he's done an awareness check. Parents are always wor worried about their kids being bullied, harassed. 
Scott's been brought up with the fact that he's got Down syndrome and it's really cool and I have it and you don't sort of attitude. So um, it's all about him. <laughs> definitely. Okay. 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 Start on that. And it's not very big. Okay, let's see the puppet show now. Well, Scott's our oldest son, and we have three boys. Nothing but boys right there. <laughs> Much to her chagrin. And he likes being the oldest. He thinks that's great. He will always be the oldest, and he reminds everyone regularly. What's for lunch, Scott? Why would you want to get a job? Why would you want to get a job? Because mom, because it's just being a chef. Being a chef. So you'd like to get a job being a chef? Yeah, yeah. But first you be just gotta wait for us. You have to wait? Yeah. And what are you waiting for? The, if the interview. You're allowed to be in high school until you're 21 and um, the last two years they do as a, as a transition program. So they try to get you know work experience and work on resumes and stuff like that. The, the focus in, in the transition program is just so generic it doesn't give you anything specific to do and full-time employment is I guess what our expectation was. And it took about seven, eight months before we could hear of an interview opportunity and uh, we were pretty confident that it would just all happen and it didn't. He must have gone to hundreds of interviews. He must have sent out thousands of resumes. Doors would close because they would, there would be the stigma. When he would be in those interviews, he wouldn't defend himself maybe as well or assert himself maybe as well as he would have otherwise if people had given him a chance. Um, I think that wears on you after years and years of rejection. I uh, hesitate a lot. I don't speak up right away. And I think a lot of that's because I just burnt out, I guess. He had dreams for himself, and it was and it was just heartbreaking, you know, to imagine a bright future for him at that point. One program shouldn't get supervised at all, and the others were kind of like placements in big department stores where it, it wasn't a big learning opportunity for her. There was not much help in our country for students with disability. The programs that were offered there were not meeting her needs. During that time I applied to take her back to Canada and when we came back I got in touch with um, Christian Horizon and they told me um, today is the last day for the application. So I got in from work and I worked on the application, sent it off that night. We didn't know really much about um, the Christian Horizons organization before we got involved. They had a, a short little video which was great, but you know, what's the program really going to be like? I mean, you don't know. Uh, you take a chance. Christian Horizons is an organization that provides services to people with disabilities to become full participating members of the community. To be involved in every aspect of life that they choose to be involved in, to be able to learn, and then to be able to go and experience the world as they see fit to do so themselves.
people with intellectual disabilities are ready for this particular type of program. I just needed to, to share the vision and the potential. And Humber College, as a visionary college, said, yeah, yeah, we want to be a part of this. Christian Horizons came to us and said, what do you think about doing an employment readiness type program? They identified culinary as an area where people with developmental disabilities could be employed. We had the capacity to stay within Humber and to be able to go to our colleagues in the School of Hospitality, Recreation and Tourism. I started out with a simple five-day course, which has now grown into what is 30 weeks. So it's pretty great to see the level of excitement in these students. Our chefs made it clear right from the beginning that they were creating a curriculum that was consistent with industry standards. The students do come in and they they learn how to cook. They do that here at the college. That's what we're looking for. That, that, that's going to make it happy. They go out on placement, and so they're placed in a number of different industry uh, restaurants, etc. And then the other part of it is at Christian Horizons, where they are learning a number of different skills to help them be successful in the workplace. After we watch the video, I have some questions that I'm just going to give out to everybody. It's just something to get your mind stimulated and just to see what you can actually remember. Whose responsibility is it to keep our food supply safe? Everyone. Who, who's everyone? Where does it start? Maddie? Um, it starts with who, people who grow it. Right. Then it's people who they send it away and then it comes into like the grocery stores or, in our case, the restaurants. Right. Perfect. That's, that's a great answer. And so, can you imagine trying to keep the food safe from the beginning of the growth of the food, right? Like the steps that they have to take to prevent food contamination? Yeah. How are your hair at them? Sorry, I should have done that before. Did you wash your hands? I did wash my hands. <laughs> Health and safety grow. We're certainly hearing a lot about kitchen safety in our own kitchen, for example. <laughs> so there are a lot of lessons that she's learning that she's bringing home, and she is really integrating it into her life in a way that some of the other programs didn't do to the same degree. It's that combination of the kind of, they call it the soft skills, the life skills, learning, and then the very pragmatic restaurant skills that are completely transferable to the job place. You know, with the start of the program, we've, we've gotten feedback from, from the instructor saying that, you know, they were a little, little concerned at the beginning because he was so quiet and reserved and whatnot. There was one more thing, actually. Maybe, um, Scott. We can help you along with this, no worries. As time has gone on, he's, he's really come out of his shell as he's gained the confidence and realized, you know, what a great program it is. Okay, so we'll start with, let's start with you guys. Oh <laughs> Do you guys need another minute? Talk between each other before you give a final answer. Oh, yes, yes. Okay, we got one. <laughs> yes. You're right. This year has been amazing for him. It was yeah. a key thing for him to get involved with this culinary arts program. He's up yeah. at five thirty in the morning some mornings, and you know, on four different buses to get there. He never once said, "I'm not going back." Oh no. Wake at the start of an early dawn To make me put my dress shoes on You and your fail and your pale white dress Still as kids it all made sense It's an evolution with this program. It's not just going in there learning a set of skills. It's, it's uh, life-changing. 
suddenly we started to see a light at the end of this tunnel. I was so excited. I just hoped that he'd feel the same way. Finally, I found something, and it was uh, the cooking that I seemed to be able to accelerate. Almost done. There's all kinds of job readiness programs out there where they promise you a job at the end of it, but you get there and they're like, um, well, at least now you know how to make a resume. The thing about this program with uh, Christian Horizons is teaching me how to be with people that aren't in a classroom setting. I was learning how to be social rather than intellectual or whatever you want to call it. It's really helped me to uh, be able to have an identity and to be able to function in society. This is the first time he's ever been seen for the person he is rather than for the diagnosis. He keeps bringing that up all the time to me, like people are telling me I'm doing a good job, that I'm a good worker, that they'd hire me. And he's never heard that before. I'm not used to having this much encouragement and respect. I never gave myself the chance to experience that. I was thinking that all there was to life was just this gray matter that never really amounted to anything, but I'm starting to see colors now and appreciate the beauty that's there, not just in things, but in people. Maybe you'd feel this way in your early 20s. Jim's experiencing that now as he approaches 50. And I just, I think it's amazing, you know, and I'm so proud of him. My name is Carm Career. I'm the owner of Casey's Bar and Grill in Brampton. At first she was a little hesitant, very soft-spoken. She was very introverted, kept to herself. One of my fears was that she was going to get to a part of it and say I don't like it anymore. But that never happened. She, she kept upbeat about it. She was excited. Now there's a lot more interaction involved. Regardless of what the task is, she's a lot more social. She has come a long way over these past few months. I wouldn't let her in the kitchen by herself before, but I can now. She shows a lot more responsibility and she's cautious about what she does. I'm professional. We're all professional. Every new task you give her, it kind of reinforces her confidence. Uh, at first it started off as a basic portioning of cheeses, from that it went into you know portioning vegetables, salads, proteins, and now she's actually started to make her own sauces and recipes, so she's definitely evolved quite a bit. Okay, let's do this before the tacos get burnt. She's thinking about the future and she knows that this is skill for life. She can use it to make a living from. You can tell she has a heart for culinary and it just makes our job that much easier. Should I just sit and wait for you to serve? No, you stay right here and pay attention. I can't think of a better way to say it, but I'm really so grateful to them for the patience that they have had and for the care that they have given and for the level that they have lifted her to. <laughs> Accept the fact that your child has a disability and help them, give a lot of help and support so they can experience their worth.
good, yeah. Dory said, I'm glad I'm not left behind. It was really important to us that we create a graduation ceremony for these students that is similar to what other students would have at Humber. Tonight we're celebrating the graduation, as you know, of our students who have completed the first ever basic culinary skills training program. It's a wonderful evening for our students and the people from Humber, people from Christian Horizons, family and friends. Humber is looking beyond this evening to the future. And what we see is this is a doorway to employment-oriented post-secondary college education for adults with developmental disabilities. We wanted to have a guest speaker, and that guest speaker is a man named Tim Harris, and he is going to be talking about his experience as a man with Down syndrome who runs his own restaurant and enterprise. I am Tim Harris. I am 29 years old, and I am living the life of my dreams. It's important for all of us to see people who are successful, you know, living the dreams that we have for ourselves, and that's what these students will have today. We're not talking about difference, we're talking about college. We're not talking about anything else except people getting a job and, and being employed and everybody has a right to that. We believe that, that people belong to communities. So when you belong, you're missed when you're not there. And so each of the students, as, as you leave your placements and you go on to your work, you're going to be missed at your placements because you truly belong there and that's a special, that's a special thing. Tonight I want you to look around, look at each other, appreciate each other and say, those that said I couldn't do this and be here, who needs them? Look at your parents and your support people and turn to them and, and thank them as well because you are also here because of those around you that support you. We never, ever, ever accomplish anything in isolation. Tonight is an ending. Our students are graduating. It's also a beginning for them as they pursue their dreams of culinary employment. But I believe firmly that it's also the beginning of a new era of college education for adults with developmental disabilities. And we're here to celebrate that as well. Thank you. It's our vision that this program would not only be replicated in other program areas, but also be replicated across the province at other colleges and, and learning institutions. The next graduate is Dory James. Our next graduate is Scott McCady. Our next graduate is Jim Mays. Our next graduate is Madeline Stratton. You're here, you should be proud of your accomplishments. Grads, you have earned every moment of tonight's celebration. <laughs>